In a time when pirates ruled the sea, there was only one man they feared. Hi everyone, Ken here. Today we are exploring the mansion of John McPherson. Make sure to hit the subscribe button before we set sail for this house. Born in 1726 in the shadowy closes of Edinburgh, Scotland, John McPherson was a man whose destiny was as unpredictable as the seas he would come to master. His journey from the Scottish Highlands to the bustling port of Philadelphia was marked by a relentless pursuit of adventure and prosperity, leaving him yearning for the sea. By 1751, McPherson had become the feared commander of the Britannia, a 20-cannon British privateer that roamed the Atlantic and Caribbean, disrupting enemy trade during times of war. McPherson's life on the ocean was a thrilling narrative of close encounters and naval battles. As a privateer, he was a legalized pirate and pirate hunter, a fine line distinguished by the letter of mark that sanctioned his raids on enemy ships. His exploits were legendary as he sunk dozens of pirate ships in pocketed stolen treasure, capturing the imaginations and respect of both allies and adversaries. However, the privateer's life was fraught with peril and McPherson bore its scars, most notably losing his arm twice from skirmishes with cannonballs. With the end of privateering in sight due to the 1763 Treaty of Paris, McPherson turned his seafaring fortune towards building a legacy on land. Mount Pleasant was the embodiment of his dream. Designed by Thomas Neville, a student of Edmund Woolley, the mansion became a marvel of Georgian elegance, reflecting McPherson's wealth. Its architecture, with Doric columns, a balustrated roof, and ornate interiors, was a testament to the prosperity and refined taste of its owner. The classically styled mansion was built from brick and stone and further covered over with plaster, with two nearly identical outbuildings flanking its sides. Perched high above the river, Mount Pleasant became known as the most elegant seat in Pennsylvania. Entering the Grand Georgia Mansion, we arrive in the front hall, finished out with simple but intricately hand-carved millwork gracing the walls. To one side is the drawing room, originally decorated with antique English and Scottish furniture. Viewing the room not through a centuries-old camera lens, but instead through a 200-year-old drawing, we gain a better sense of how this room once appeared. Let's now turn around and head across the front hall to find the dining room. The dining room was the pinnacle of fashion with a single, painted wood-paneled wall acting as an accent with built-in storage to display the finest china McPherson had plundered. Yet we still have not seen the grandest room in the house. For that, we will have to head upstairs and travel down the second floor stair hall. This brings us to the great chamber, clad in ornately embellished wood paneling. This room features only the finest furniture in McPherson's collection, from Chippendale wingback chairs to Queen Anne side tables. While some pirates bury their treasure, McPherson put his on full display. Mount Pleasant was more than a mere residence, it was a stage for the unfolding of McPherson's life. In the broader historical narratives of its time, it witnessed the personal tragedies of McPherson, including the death of his first wife and the tragic loss of his son during the Battle of Quebec. The mansion also saw the American Revolution's upheavals and hosted figures like Benedict Arnold reflecting the tumultuous times. Through the centuries, Mount Pleasant has stood resilient, its story interwoven with the fabric of American history. Restored by the Philadelphia Museum of Art, it continues to invite visitors to step back in time and imagine the life of a man whose spirit of adventure and resilience was as vast as the ocean he once mastered. Which room was your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.